Hey guys, this is Little Pug Games, and today we're going to build our own save and load data script. We're going to be able to save our information when the game quits and load it back up when it starts. It's going to be able to take care of the game state in between sessions. Let's go over what we're going to build today really quickly. We have a farmer here, and he's able to pick flowers of different colors and bunches. And if you see the top left, the flower count goes up. So we have 615, but when we restart the game, the count is lost. So we're going to build something that keeps track of the flower state in between sessions. So let's get to the scripting part and I'll show you guys really quickly how it works. So we have a farmer script and we have a game data script that keeps track of the flowers. Here we have the game data that the farmer uses right here. And the farmer in the awake method simply gets the component game data to use and the game data holds the information about the, the flowers. So it's just a dictionary with the color and it maps to the number of flowers of that color. The first thing we want to do if we want to create a save file is to create a serializable class that holds the information we want to save, namely this dictionary. We're going to create a new file and we're going to name it flower save save data. We're going to open it and this is not a mono behavior. It's going to be a class that just holds information that we want to serialize this dictionary. So we can just copy paste this and keep flower data. And we can also give this the serializable attribute. Serializable and Serializable. Okay, spelled it wrong, and we can delete these two that we don't need. So this will be able to be serialized on the user's computer or phone or whatever it is they're using. Now what we want to do is use this flower save data, and let's first create two methods that we're going to need in game data. We're gonna create a load method which will load the flower save data into this class and we'll also create a private oh wait nah this returns an object and save so this is a void save and this will take an object and we'll call this to save this will be the item that we want to save onto the user's platform so first things first, when we create a save file, we want to know what the save file's name is. So let's make a variable that holds this information. We're going to create a read-only string, and we're going to name this save file path or name. And this is going to be called, let's just name this save data dot dat all right so in load what we want to do is let's create an object that holds the information once we load it and first things first does our file actually exist let's set let's add some libraries so file dot exists and unity has a cool little property it's called persistent data path so this you can use this path instead of trying to figure out some absolute path to create on the user's platform so it's you, you can just use this for android ios mac windows doesn't matter so that's nice and then we'll just append the save file name to the end. And if it exists, we want to load this information. 
first things first is we want to create a binary formatter to load the information in. Initialize this. We also need a file stream. File stream. And we can create one by using file dot file ah, dot open and this will be the path of our save file which is right there and we want this to be in open so now we want to load the information binary formatter dot deserialize so we want to deserialize information that's already been loaded and this takes file stream and that's it the last thing we want to do is close our file stream and we want to return to load so let's go over this really quickly we created the binary formatter that is capable of serializing and deserializing data we created a file stream to our save file we loaded the information in using the binary formatter and then we close the stream at the end and the save portion of this is very very similar we can copy well let's not copy anything well let's copy this part copying always ends up going to bad places so let's do file stream and we're gonna do the same thing file dot open we'll use the same path that we loaded the file in except this time we'll use file mode dot create and so we have our information that we want to save we're gonna say binary formatter dot serialize and we're gonna give it the file stream and then we're gonna give it the object that we want it to serialize and remember this object is going to be the flower save data right here and again we want to close the file stream file stream dot close and mm, oh, my bad all right so here it is and now we can load the flower save data in so we want to say load and we want to cast this into a flower save data and remember this has a public variable called whoops dot flower data so what's happening is when we call load it's going into the user's computer it's deserializing the save file it returns to it an object of this class and it's gonna grab this property there and we're gonna use that as our game data so now what happens if we haven't ha if we don't have any save files? So we want to check that number of flow. Actually, it might be null. So we're going to do flower save data data. So if data is null, because it might return null in this case. If data is null, number of flowers is equal to new dictionary. Else, number of flowers is equal to data dot flower data. And there we go. Oh, so one last thing I forgot so how do we save the data so unity has a method called on application quit and we can 
create a flower save data to save flower save data data is equal to new flower save data we can create flower data is equal to this number of flowers is it simple like that yes okay so now we want to save and we'll save the data and let's test it let's pick some flowers and we have four five one and then when we quit it should save let's load it up again and there you go four five one awesome <laughs> cool hey you guys that does it for today's episode we learned how to create save files for our games and we did this using the binary formatter and the file stream the other part of this was that we needed to create a serializable class that held the information that we want to save for our game and that does it you guys have a good day and i'll see you guys next time